when you have an American classic like the Oreo, why change it? For Kraft, the answer was simple, because after bringing the Oreo to China in 1996, sales started to sag. We started to do some research and said, gee, you know, I'm not sure everybody really likes this this American version, which is quite sweet. So we started testing alternatives, and it took us a long time and a lot of prototypes because we were trying to get exactly the right balance. And then Lorna well, Davis heads Craft China. She says remaking the Oreo helped double sales in two years and made Oreo the number one selling biscuit in China. That first variation on the original, one that looks the same but is less sweet. And here's the biggest riff on the original, the Oreo wafer stick. We discovered that the wafer market was very, very big here in China, and we didn't have an offer in wafer. And consumers really liked Oreo, but actually they like wafers. So we launched this product, which is a chocolate-coated wafer, and it, has, uh, it comes in a, in a, in a pre-packaged product like this. Oh. And in 2006, this was the biggest single SKU, or biggest single item in China. It's the product that made history for Kraft, not only because it's so different from the original, but because it's the first product developed in the China market and now sold in Canada, Korea and Australia. I like the big front face. The hope is this kind of entrepreneurial spirit in local markets will spur Kraft's next big sellers. Automatic hit. People just loved it. Yes. Okay. Right, let's go this try. You can tell it's an Oreo. It may look different. It tastes like an Oreo. Yeah. That says a lot for our R&D people because she managed to create a coated wafer product that still tastes like an Oreo. That's really impressive. From there, the number of variations grew. White chocolate covered wafer sticks. A cookie lined with cream that can be used as a straw and a super long wafer cookie. The wafer sandwich, so you can see it behaves exactly the same as an Oreo. You just have to take it apart, and of course it's extremely dunkable. Kraft also came out with a smaller and more affordable pack of cookies. One of the things we found was that there were many people in, uh, in China who really liked Oreo, but their absolute available money at any time was not enough for a full pack of Oreos. Full pack of Oreos here is about 70 US cents. And so this pack is 35 cents, and it does particularly well in the second and third tier cities. So even that pricing difference, selling something for 35 US cents versus 70 US cents makes that much of a difference in sales. A very big difference. And to get consumers to try the new Oreos, a promotional blitz from in-store samples, which often result in immediate sales, to commercials that showed consumers the traditional American way of eating Oreos. From twisting the Oreo apart and licking the cream to dunking them in milk, all of it foreign to the Chinese consumer. And what I think is important with Oreo is that the ritual is on the surface of it about cookies and dunking into milk. The reality is many people, even Americans, don't dunk it. But it's a moment of connection. It's a moment of, of, of fun between parents and children particularly. Up next, China's internet battle royale. You may be surprised who's playing catch up here. To the American viewer out there, to the American investor, you think, well, Google has a deep pockets, it's got the experience, it's got the brand name. Why isn't it the leader in China? The answer when we come back. Plus, find the American dream half a world away. A rare look inside Home Depot's push to get the Chinese to do it themselves. Made in China, the People's Republic of Profit will be